Well, good morning, good afternoon, everybody. Um, this is Christian Buckley, Chief Evangelist at uh, BZ, and we're going to kick things off here. We're, I think we've got everybody on board. So Eric and John, are you still there? I'm here. It's John here. Sure. All right, Eric Overfield here. Excellent. Well, thanks a lot, guys. And and for uh, everyone who's joining this, and we are recording the session, and the slides will be made, made available out on SlideShare, and we'll send them out to everyone who participated as well. Um, so what we're talking about today is implementing successful collaboration and going through and talking about some of the community feedback around this. And I'll get into this in a minute and talk about the initiative in the background. Uh, so myself and Eric and John and 20 others have been part of this initiative over the course of the past, not quite a year. I think we kicked the first one off in April, March or April last year. So coming up on a year. Uh, but first, a little bit uh, about us, if I can get the slide to move forward. There we go. Uh, so a little bit about me, uh, Christian Buckley, uh, six-time author, six-time SharePoint MVP, uh, been in the social collaboration space for many, many years, and I'm the chief evangelist at BZ. And you can find me at, at Buckley Planet. So I'll be hosting this and uh, kind of turning the slides uh, but uh, Eric, if you want to introduce yourself. Sure. Hi, all. My name is Eric Overfield, president and co-founder of Pixel and also an MVP now for two years. Um, I specialize mainly in the, the branding UI front-end interface portal design aspect of SharePoint, um, but that has turned into so much type of collaboration of SharePoint that uh, and sh uh, collaboration of 365 that my focus has been kind of shifting that way as well. And Eric also runs the or organizes the SharePoint Saturdays in Northern California. And I know, Eric, you've got your hand in a lot of them, kind of like a, as, as I've done in the Western U.S. Uh, but Eric actually runs uh, Silicon Valley and Sacramento. Is that it right now? <laughs> I am actively involved in those, absolutely. I kind of help lead the leadership on that. And then I really enjoy kind of like the community aspect of SharePoint uh, overall, the, the the community aspect. So I help on the side with a lot of other uh, SharePoint Saturdays, kind of west of the Rockies. Um, yep. As, as do I. Yeah. So exactly. I don't get really involved in a bunch of those. Exactly. And John. Well, Yes, sir. Well, hi. Uh, uh, my name is John White. I am the uh, CTO and co-founder of a company called Unlimited Viz. We make tie graph. If, uh, if you've heard of that, we do uh, collaborative analytics for Yammer and Office 365. Um, I've been a SharePoint server MVP for, I think, seven turns now, something something like, like, like that. Uh, although we focus in on the business intelligence, or always have always focused on the business intelligence workload in SharePoint, and now off of SharePoint, uh, zeroing in primarily on uh, on Power BI. There's a lot that's happening in that space, and I know that uh, I mean it's a different topic entirely. But as you start uh, looking at you know Microsoft's uh, you know roadmap and what they're focusing on and bringing intelligence to you know SharePoint and Office 365. You know, I think we're going to be hearing a lot more from, you know, John and his team, but that topic, it, you know, it's, it's, it's evolving what we know as SharePoint. But again, that's a, that's a whole other topic and session right yeah. there. And, and, and speaking of that, uh, and this is, uh, of course, BZ, if you're not familiar with us, uh, so our tagline is uh, the intelligent workplace. So BZ is built on and uh, for SharePoint, whether on-prem, hybrid, or online. Uh, we have an award-winning uh, user experience, but what we do is we uh, extend and enhance the collaboration and communication capabilities of SharePoint. And uh, so there's a, you know, the intelligence, adding intelligence to SharePoint is critical to our roadmap as well. And if you're not familiar with BZ, again, we won uh, the, the best Office 365 solution, the most innovative cloud solution last couple years at European SharePoint Conference. and uh, you know, a bunch of other uh, recognitions and awards going on, and uh, I think you'll you'll see the brand more and more at various shows and things around the world. So you're getting uh, more and more uh, you know involved with uh, the community activities and growing out through the through the channel. But let's get into the meat of this. Um, where this started, I've got a couple slides here that kind of go back, uh, you know, to the earlier surveys, um, really looking at the current state 
of enterprise collaboration. And I always kind of start with uh, you know the the first keynote that Satya Nadella, CEO of Microsoft, did at the Worldwide Partner Conference a couple years back when he became CEO and took that over from Steve Ballmer. And he talked at length about uh, transforming collaboration and transforming productivity. And it was one of those things that, uh, you know, those of us that work in the space, and Eric and John, I'm sure you, you know, remember distinctly like that, you know, what he talked about in that, that session and some of the things that were, were shown there. I think that was where we saw some of the really interesting work being done around Cortana and the beginning of what is now like the collaboration as a, as a service or collaboration as a platform movement, but about adding more intelligence to collaboration and making collaboration more accessible um, through, you know, uh, through data, through analytics. So, uh, you know, through like the using bots, using language, natural language to drive computing. It, there's just this this huge you know, shift underway in the way that we're thinking about collaboration and communication. So this, he, he talked about this, and, and I don't know about you guys, uh, my, my thoughts were like, that was great, sounds exciting, how much is this is actually going to be real, and how fast is this going to happen? Uh, and I think we've all been pretty amazed by how fast it's been happening. Yeah. I don't know. Your De definitely, definitely. I mean, it, it, it's it's been moving quick. I'll, I'll also say, when I come out of a, a a talk like that, I think that's great. What's this really mean? I mean, wh where does the rubber hit the road? What what does it actually mean from a from a day to day standpoint? What uh, what work patterns are going to change as a result of it? What it boils down to? What does collaboration really mean? And I think it means different things to different people. But uh, we've had a a real smorgasbord to choose from for the last few years. I'm, I'm sure of that. Yeah, exactly. I know, Eric, I mean, did you have any takeaways from that initial keynote as well? I, I'm going to echo what you guys have been saying. It, it's moving so fast. And kind of what John just said on, there's so many options. And that's what I'm seeing from the clients I work with. They don't know how to they don't know how to collaborate yet. Like, there's all these different tools. When do I use what? And the roadmap is getting clear, which is good, but it's still confusing when you look at Yammer and Teams and all the rest. Like, what am I supposed to use? And that's we have to come in and say, well, what is what does collaboration mean to you? Or really, we're asking the questions of what is it you're trying to do, and then we try to help them say, ah, this is what we think you mean by collaboration. Right. That it's you know, and I think you both said kind of the same thing about how fast it's moving. We have this really fast-paced you know world. Employees are being constantly barraged by content and tasks and requirements, and it's happening. They're seeing that's what's happening inside the organization, as well as all of these innovations that are happening out in, you know, like born in the cloud companies providing these great tools and capabilities, and they may even use some of them in their personal lives. And it's it's difficult sometimes to get those to translate them into the business world. But it seems like a lot of you know organizations have uh, you know not moved fast enough keeping up with where technology is going. But collaboration in general, and kind of where this initiative came from, is that you know collaboration. If you go back and look at the survey results uh, back in like 2006, 2007, when I joined Microsoft in 2006, and there was a survey out there looking at SharePoint usage. And uh, and what was predominantly the case was that SharePoint was viewed as a team-based, an organizational, like a business unit, smaller team technology. It was a nice to have. Different teams got use out of it, but very few viewed it as this enterprise scale solution. And what's changed just over the last uh, you know uh, six seven years is that collaboration is now viewed as, as a business imperative. Um, it, it's and it's not just like what we'll see with some of the results here. It's not just about technology. That's just one piece of it. Um, but it, it also comes with helping employees to understand how to leverage that technology and work more collaboratively. And so that's what we're. I think we're going to see that within some of the results here. So last year when we put this together, uh, so again, there's 23 or 24 people that are on officially on the panel for this that agreed to 
um, join in and participate in this uh, measuring collaboration success initiative. And sometimes we use the hashtag measure collab success, which is still a really long hashtag to use. I, I <laughs> realize that. Um, but your goal was really uh, uh, to understand how organizations define collaboration, how they measure it, and then how they implement their successful collaboration strategies. And there's a lot that's within that. So we divided this into three areas, and we really uh, we focused on three surveys. So last year we started with uh, you know that definition. So how do organizi organizations define success? Because uh, and I always use uh, not everybody has seen this movie, but I always use the example of that very important American film Spaceballs um, <laughs> to 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 uh, make this point. Um, but if those that have seen uh, Spaceballs, and I know Eric and, and John, you know you're passionate about the movie, of course. Um, if you uh, remember yeah. that, you remember when the the ship with the bad guys was uh, pursuing the good guys, and they overshot them in hyperspace, and they went plaid. Yes. The whole thing's like, oh my gosh, they went plaid. So their, uh, oh, yeah. you know, their warp signature, whatever you call it, in that. You know, um, was plaid color and just kind of, it's a comedy, folks, if you've not seen it, uh, <laughs> that name, of course. Um, but the whole concept there was that if you are fractionally off at the beginning of your jump to light space, you'll end up in the wrong galaxy. And so that is a big part of a mistake of organizations that don't have a clear definition of success like, are you going to get to where you think you're going at the end? Probably not because no one else will be on the same page. So how are organizations defining success? That's what we looked at that first stage. The second one was how do organizations monitor and measure that success? And so we've got a, a you know the second survey and the results there. We've got a white paper on each of those two. And I'll, I'll share the links with these, uh, with both of those in, at the end here. And then the third phase is really what we're talking about today is effectively implementing those strategies and so that's that's some of the results now I'm gonna you know just I've got some uh, some of the older data points here because we actually before we kick things off officially uh, with the first survey we went and did kind of a sampling just to see what kind of feedback we got back like how do people define successful organization and if you look at results by the way over the year we had uh, around 550 50 organizations that responded over the course of the entire year. So it's a, it's a decent enough uh, sampling set. Um, but some of the, the, the uh, anecdotal uh, information, the, the, the direct feedback of the open questions were the most interesting there. Um, so again, I'm going to make that point. You know, It's not that you have to have a perfect understanding of where you're going, but if people aren't on the same page about the process for getting there, then uh, you know you're you're going to go off in different directions. Somebody's going to go plaid at some point. Um, if, if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. Right. So there's a great question uh, in that first survey. So we did this initial sampling, and in the first survey, we asked respondents to share their thoughts on how their management teams viewed collaboration. And so these are some of the responses. So they know it's it's important but they're resistant to the new technology, uh, and it may be because of real or mostly perceived uh, uh, you know, uh, security and regulatory concerns. They see it as a nice to have, but they don't really look at you know, it's how it's central to that information flow and how it helps the business. Um, they understand the value and support it, but they see it as a technology solution, and, and we see this all the time. Uh, their idea of collaboration is sharing files or it's email. Um, and then they think that it's uh, the key to success and increased productivity, but they haven't wanted to invest in the tools or the training to achieve that goal. I mean, guys, any any thoughts, anything, differences of opinion here? The, the, those all pop up. I mean, sharing files and email certainly are pieces of collaboration. There's no question about it. Um, uh, but they don't necessarily tell the whole story. I mean, SharePoint was the collaboration platform, right? And what was it best at? File sharing at the end of the day, or document sharing. Um, look at it, looking at it as, a, uh, as a, a technology solution, well, who's been putting forward these solutions? The IT department. So 
I think it's understandable that everyone's a little bit leery of anything the IT department brings uh, brings forward anymore. So th th these are all understandable. They do all reflect, I think, a lack of understanding of what the ultimate solution, if there is a an ultimate solution, I think there's probably multiple um, solutions uh, at the end of the day. What what, what that what that is, uh, and it comes back to the definitional thing. If, if you don't know what the end goal is, how are you going to know when you got there? So if you don't know what collaboration means, is it just sharing files? Maybe it is to some people. And, and Eric, I, I mean, yeah, I know that you're you're seeing as you're out working with customers. Um, you know, where, where how this shift is happening and who is making the decisions around the technology and around collaboration that's also evolving and changing. Is it is it still IT that owns all of that? It, it, unfortunately, it is, but I'm starting to see more of the corpcom corp communications take a little bit more active role, which is good. But I, I think I'm looking at like the two right most comments, the yellow one and the green one, and I think those are really funny. But it's, it, I see that as definitely the truth, but it's like, okay, we know it's important, but there's resistance to new technology. <laughs> Uh, okay, so what the staff is doing, what, what your organization is doing is they're creating their own shadow IT, that kind of buzzword that we've been hearing a lot, or I've been hearing a lot recently. Yep. They're, they need to collaborate. They need to not just share a file on the internal network share. They need to ex share that file with external resources. So they go get Dropbox without telling anybody, or a small group will go do that. Uh, then you've got uh, people want to have like long-term chats or threaded chats, so they're just going to go get Slack, and they're not going to tell anybody. So then IT finds out, they go and shut it down, so everyone else goes somewhere else. It's, it's an issue that people, that organizations kind of have to deal with, and we wanted, we didn't want to have to invest in it because um, to, to achieve that collaboration, well, your organization is going to do it without you. And uh, IT is just given a task, hey, go figure out what collaboration and it does it. They don't know. It needs to be organically built by the people. Um, and of course, still going back to what we've been saying, you, you still need that endpoint. Just finding out what collaboration, or just defining collaboration as, set, as such and such is not actually going to work. It's unique for every organization. Exactly. And, and that is a great segue right into that. You know, how successful has your organization been? And so this is where you start looking at the data. I mean, here, this was the initial results that we went and looked at as we sampled out there. Not a lot of responses initially, and, and uh, that was actually the, the biggest of the three surveys as far as your know, responses. But, uh, you know, when we got, uh, you know, a couple hundred more uh, data points in there, it filled this out. But the, the really, the percentages didn't really change. And so people recognized, hey, we're seeing, oh, and I see a typo. Uh, but you know, that small teams had some success. Um, it's happening, though, at that team level as far as success of collaboration. So, it, again, we, we've established that collaboration now is it's being rolled out enterprise-wide. Everybody has access to SharePoint, but when asking people, yes, but has it been successful? Are people actually using it? Um, and you see the responses here. Um, only 12% here of this initial sampling said, hey, yeah, we're very successful. Um, everybody's saying, hey, no, just in some areas or in small teams. It doesn't really line up with it's important, does it? No. No, it doesn't. That, so how, how It looks more like it's being tolerated. <laughs> <laughs> and so and I think part of it that feeds into that, too, is the, you know, how well do people, you know, within your organization collaborate? And... You know, here you've got this kind of malaise, yeah, average, 53%, some teams, but poorly across the enterprise. And that's, I mean, that's another, another issue, too, is like a lot of organizations, the reason they go and do this enterprise collaboration is they want to be able to leverage that intelligence, that learning, sharing ideas across the enterprise, and yet... Everyone here is recognizing it's working at a small team level, um, but we're, it's not as effective. We're not successful across the enterprise. Well, you, you don't have to look back too far in history to find an example of this right within Microsoft of it, you know, information hoarding. One department doesn't want to talk to another team. Uh, department, one team doesn't want to talk to another team. I wonder how much of that is out there. Yeah, I mean, I have I also think my opinions, but yeah, Eric, go ahead. It's somewhat of a, of a people problem, too, at least. Again, that's kind of what I'm seeing is 
when different groups uh, within an organization, especially the larger organizations, collaboration still bleeds from the top. And so if you have a strong manager, a strong director, a strong leader who is embracing collaboration within their specific little subgroup, it seems to work really well. That person uses that tool, they get out there and they help push it to everybody else. But it's, it's difficult to push a single solution across an entire organization because some people just won't get it. Maybe their processes doesn't need that kind of collaboration. They only need that other thing over there. They don't need the conversations. They just need simple file sharing. Another one, they don't file sharing really at all. They don't need to for whatever reason. Instead, they need to have a place to have collaboration. Or another group just needs to be able to co-author documents and be able to collaborate that. And they want to be able to have some sort of inline chatting. And, and when you have a huge smorgasbord of ideas, now people don't know which to use at any given time. So I think that's why like, you, I see a lot of that average. And like some teams get it. But the whole organization, it's so difficult to push a plan for everybody. Well, that's, I mean, how often do you, the two of you come across customers that have, uh, are, are that, you know, mature in their view of collaboration where they recognize that, hey, we have a definition for what collaboration looks like across the enterprise. However, we recognize that smaller units, teams, business units may have a different definition but here's how it all comes together. How common is it for an organization to, to, to have that approach? So it, it's, it, I'm lucky, well, lucky enough, it, our, 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 one, our analytical product for Yammer, uh, our Tigraph um, Analytics for Yammer, has a audience of rather large, rather forward-looking collaborative companies, basically those who really care that they're doing a good job collaborating. So by nature, we're, we're seeing some of these people who are probably in the, uh, in the number five category. And one thing I can certainly say in common that they all share is that they all have thought it was important enough at some point in time to appoint someone, uh, the role is usually called community manager. Uh, and again, this is just for enterprise social collaboration, that, that, that one piece of the puzzle. But it, it's, it's amazing because we get to see the uh, data from all of these customers, and they all typically have a, an adoption curve that looks something like, we just got this product, we adopted it, everybody played with it a little bit, then it fell off a cliff from a uh, standpoint of usage. Then we brought this person in to shepherd the conversations to make sure everybody was using it, to make sure everybody understood that it was happening, and then it just takes off. Mm -hmm. uh, that is a is a is a common pattern across the board. And I don't know how that plays to other other um, technical uh, technical solutions in the space, but from a from an ECS and a, and a true across the enterprise uh, standpoint, you got you, it, having this having this role whose uh, whose, whose responsibility it, it is to foster this collaboration, particularly between these uh, departments, is, is a, certainly a, a critical success factor, factor as far as I can tell. And that's funny because I'm on the other side of the spectrum, whereas the, the people that come to me are in the two and three range, potentially even the one, one range they, they, of this answer we're looking at. They're coming to me because they don't, it's not working. So uh, I hear it more of the, uh, what are we supposed to do with this whole collaboration thing? I have found what John was just saying about the uh, the community manager or the collaboration manager. I have found that to be key, uh, especially uh, when you when people were trying to adopt Yammer. That was a big one. Um, but having somebody who is able to help the organization stick to the governance policies that they pick on the collaboration side and to help be there to provide answers right away, like, okay, if someone, someone I, I've got this thing I'm supposed to be doing, I don't know what tool I'm supposed to use, what am I supposed to use? And if you have that expert on site who is able to just answer that question right away or has daily office hours or, or you know, weekly office hours or something, it greatly increases the usage and the adoption of the collaboration tools. At least that's what I have found. It, and it, it passes my gut check. That makes sense. You know, what's interesting, though, I do think that uh, there are a lot of organizations that are recognizing Again, that role, the need for that role, and I think it, you know, it'd be easy. We even have, uh, you know, like uh, as, as part of our sales process, that we have that persona of that collaboration manager, you know, that success manager defined because it, we are seeing that role more and more. I was in Vienna in November at the European SharePoint Conference. Uh, it, I had a, a new BZ customer come over to the booth and was talking about it was a huge enterprise over in Europe and tens of thousands of users 
And he said, you, he recognized that, you know, before we really even start, it's like we're trying to find uh, whether internal or go hire the person to be that change agent, that collaboration manager that will own it. And whether that person has a job in two years once it's deployed and the culture is, has changed, you know, is another question. But And so it might even need to be a contractor to, you know, come in for that role. But they recognize that it was critical to have someone helping drive that and working with the executive team as much as with the end users in uh, ensuring that success was there but uh, someone driving that it it's um, you know so when you talk about uh, you know all of the the tools and processes and measurements that are there and 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 John I mean I, you got to recognize that that's a small percentage of organizations that are you know to that point where they recognize hey we need to have this this piece for us to be successful um, I, I'm, I'm keenly aware how small a percentage that is <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, well that's hey you got to move that around John look that's opportunity because well that's why that's you guys right. are seeing so much growth you know but yeah that's right it's yeah. opportunity it's not an issue it's an opportunity that's yeah. right <laughs> Uh, all right. So the the other uh, question, uh, this background is, uh, you know, have the goals and benefits of collaboration been clearly defined and articulated? And since this goes with, I think we've determined that organizations are not doing a good job of defining it up front. So are they then going to, to articulate that within the organization? Not really. So again, you see at that small team where managers saying, okay, look, we might be screwed up at the enterprise level. They don't know what they're doing in IT, but here's how we're going to do it within our organization. Uh, and so, again, you might have some articulated goals across the enterprise, but how do those goals actually translate into my day-to-day -day activities? And that's where you start seeing that shadow IT. That's where you see people going off and, some marketing manager said, you know, I just saw an ad for this service or, or you know what, I've been using Slack for, you know, for this and I'm, let's use it at the team level. All right. I mean, any other thoughts on that? I think kind of, I think we talked about definition enough. Let's, why don't we jump in? Let's go, next, the, the latest survey. So here we are at the third survey. So this isn't, we're not going to share every data point that was captured. Uh, the white paper for this, the last one, will actually be out in the next uh, couple days. I'm, I'm waiting for feedback from a couple more folks. Uh, and uh, so I, we should have, and I've got Rachel online. I'm going to put just peer pressure on Rachel. I think probably have this out by Monday next week. Um, probably uh, just, you know, you, you don't have to say yes or no. We can, you can yell at me later for uh, <laughs> putting your name on there. But um, so yeah, probably uh, Monday. So everybody that's uh, that's here that's registered will uh, push a link to this so you can download this with all the results. But I wanted to just share a couple key points here. I know Eric and John, you've provided feedback already. So um, please don't read verbatim from your notes of what you said for the white paper. Um, but uh, in your view, so what are the elements of a successful collaboration implementation? So we wanted to, you know, just add this, ask this broad question um, and give people to the opportunity to add other pieces that they thought weren't missing. And we actually had no one add points that weren't within this of how they, what are the elements of that successful implementation? But Right at the top of this, and, and I'm, I'm happy to see that result, yeah. that the idea of active end user participation. I mean, what did you guys think of this result set and how people prioritized? Go ahead, John. Go ahead, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> I always jump in. You go first. Eric. Uh, sure. I'm a little disappointed number one wasn't 100%, but, but yeah. at the same time, I look at active end user participation, 98%, yet previous survey was showing that, uh, that this isn't a user issue, it's, it's, a, it's a technology issue. Well, <laughs> yet 89% said this is end user participation. Yeah. It, it's a no-brainer. End user has to be involved in this. They have to see the value of it. They have to understand the tool. They need the training. They need the governance. They need to know what it is that they're supposed to be doing and why they're supposed to do it. I think that thorough user education is a little low, 
at 57 percent but I also get that the tool should the tool set should be mostly self-explanatory here's the tools that we're going to use um, they work go use I, them. Yeah, I think but I, I do I do think that that does present a, a gap I, I mean I hear again and again that organizations assume that there's enough content and things that are out there and that they don't prepare enough so I would actually my experience look at five being that low as a gap or an opportunity because I, I think that this assumption that oh people understand Microsoft Office oh and people we've been using SharePoint you know long enough that people get it and then they don't understand why some people are struggling with uh, going in and and uh, you know uh, you know kind of simple capabilities inside of SharePoint and it could be that they have insufficient insufficiently trained their users on how to use what's there today but that's my my thoughts Eric sorry to interrupt you there yeah and I'm, I'm seeing that but at the same time what I'm finding most uh, most organizations most most of the people that work in organizations are they're they're busy they've got so much to do they they don't feel as though they have time to then spend the hours and hours every day trying to learn this stuff and the organizations think that all their employees are going to be someone like me who, who is going to wake up at, at six o'clock in the morning to listen to a community call on the latest and greatest out of the PNB initiative and and that's just not true so I agree with what you're saying that probably a lot of organizations just think that their users either get it or they're going to figure it out on their own and and that's just a huge mistake people are too busy they're already working eight, nine, ten hour days, and then they've got to do all their email and all their, their checkup. They just, you know, they, they, that, they need good, clean um, uh, assistance and uh, education. Well, that's why I say that it's it, it's a it's a you know like a leadership development. It's a training issue. I would say it's a challenge for those organizations to not just go and accept that. Okay, hey, look, Microsoft has this, and there's all these great videos that are out there, but really understanding what the needs are of their end users. Uh, and to go and make sure that, hey, is this, are we not seeing in this team, this business unit, they're not using our, the SharePoint environment as much? Is it because the functionality is not there? Is it because, uh, you know, they've not been trained properly on how, how to use the tools that they have? We, we, we just gave everybody access to SharePoint. That should be enough, right? Right. Well, I think that's, yeah. exactly, I think that's the mistake. <laughs> That's of course, yeah. But yeah, it, it, it's I see like one and two on here. They they kind of go hand in hand, right? One will beget the other. They're 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 related. You get good technology, people are going to want to use it. That, that makes makes perfect sense. And you have to have people use. It's collaboration. It's all about what's in people's heads. So you need everybody using it. Yeah, but I, you know, I, but I've seen customers. I always use like famously. I use this customer that came across in California that they made cheese. And not not a very high tech company. They actually had very high uh, level of participation on their technology because the culture was such it, it met their functional needs, and that's where they got that the work done. And so they had they knew how to use it. They had you yep. know they trained on it. It was ugly. It wasn't the latest technology. Um, and, and so, but I get, but I, you know what? Sorry, I'm going to correct myself. It's not about the appropriate technology being the right technology, the appropriate technology could be old. Yes. It's functional. It works. Yes. So you know what? I stand corrected. You're right. <laughs> well, I, and I also I think number three is interesting that it's number three because you know this this basically gives uh, gives gives credibility to Microsoft's approach of throwing the tool out there and worrying about the governance features later. It's the third most important one. You know, we don't care. We don't need to throttle it if it's not going to get used, right? So that makes sense. Um, I, and, and number four and number seven, there's a big gap between the two. You know, we want to have a clear definition of success, but we don't really care if we know whether or not we're achieving it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. You, without the metrics, you can't know. So that, that, that that's that's another thing that just kind of jumped out at me is. Yeah, we, we want to spend time figuring what, what we want, but we don't really care if we achieve it. This, this seems to be what that says. Let's jump to the next one. Um, so here, here is the uh, – so this one's not very controversial. So the, what we did that was different in this survey is um, most of the questions came in pairs. So it was uh, – the first question was to the respondent, and the second question was really – their perspective of what they thought, how their management viewed uh, the, the, that, that topic. 
And so just keep that in mind here with the next couple slides here. So the person, the respondent was asked, you know, how important is it to have a well-defined governance for successful collaboration? And you, you, you see the result there. It's average of 5.57. But how important do you think the management team views governance? And you see the downward shift. And it's not that extreme um, with this data set, but, you know, it's a point and a half lower. It's, it's interesting. <laughs> so you've got the practitioner on the left. And this, again, is the, the view of the practitioner of how right. their experience is with their management. So, I mean, look, if this were a scientific survey, then we would actually have this two different constituencies answering this question and compare that result. So you'd have to be an executive or, you know, a, a leader, a manager of some kind on the right to be able to answer that and look at that data set. So this is a little bit skewed. But those perceptions of those you know, users impact the success of collaboration in general. So if they think that their management team doesn't care about governance, how does that impact how they interact with that platform? Or maybe it's that they think their management team doesn't really care about the whole thing, and that, that colors it. Could be as well. It's hard to say. I don't, know, yeah, I don't know what to make of this. Yeah, I mean, Eric, do you have any thoughts on this? I mean, again, this one's not as striking as a couple of the others we're going to look at. but I I think it is, though. I mean, it, that one-and-a-half point drop, that's a 37% drop, and that, that that's scary. That, I mean, that's actually a huge number to me. Uh, but I definitely see it, that management, if, if management doesn't care about something, the people aren't going to do it. That That's just been probably proven for thousands of years. If you're... Yep. If you, Limited time, I will do what I need to do to get my job so that I don't get yelled at. So if you guys don't care about it, then I'm not going to care about it either. But at least the users are seeing that governance is um, is required for successful collaboration. To me, it's a pure seven. Uh, I, I would like to have seen the, the, the six and seven be you know, 75, 80 percent, but it is what it is. It's at the 30-ish percent or 60 percent. Yeah. People saw it's important. Without successful governance, I, I just don't see good collaboration actually occurring. You need policies and procedures. People need it well and clearly defined. Um, what is it I'm supposed to do? And let's kind of quickly look on the right-hand side. Uh, you look at the, the seven uh, that it's important. Uh, it went from 29% to 4%. When you look at um, end users or the people who took the survey to how important management sees it, that, that's right. disappointing. Yeah, that, that's a great call out, Eric. I mean, that looking at the, and then the way that this, the tool captures, I don't exactly like it, but as you can see, the numbers on the left side of each of those data points, you know, it's a, so at the, you know, number six was the, you know, six was the popular answer on both sides. Um, but to see that dramatic drop from 29% uh, down to 4%. So it doesn't matter that the rest what's happening in the middle as much as that drop, that's, you know, 25%. <laughs> None of the practitioners said not important or not very important. Right. But some of them clearly view, you know, small percentage, but, you know, they mm -hmm. percent say our organization clearly doesn't care about governance at all. Oh, what, or, or what, one in five of them are saying their management team doesn't care. Right. Yeah. That's pretty incredible. All right, the next one. So how, how important is it to have a clear definition of success? to be able to have successful collaboration and then how they look at their management. So let's just consume this for a minute. Let you guys, what do you think? Kind of a similar story to the last one, really. I'm, I'm surprised uh, any practitioner said it wasn't important at all. Yeah, and I'd have to think they weren't thinking through the question, and I'm not trying to berate the answers, but it's like, yeah. wow, I, I can't believe that 4% really said, oh, it's, it's not important, we're just going to try something. It, it is still a, a drop, but at, at least the last question with the average, I think, was 4 on the management side here. We're, we're pushing 4.9, we're pushing almost 5, which is good. It, it still is sad, and I think we see this throughout the entire survey, I'm going to sort of jump ahead, that we saw that the, the, the people who are trying to implement collaboration they seem to get it more, but their management, they're just sort of frustrated with it. Management is just saying, we know we need collaboration. There's this cool buzzword out there. Go do it. How you do it, we don't really right. care, and, you know, go. They focus on the That's tool. You know, and I see this. Again, it's not as sharp as drop. It's, you know, 581 to 489 as the average. 
but I think that that's it. I mean, it's it, uh, you know they they may have a definition, but that it's not clear is another piece of that. Or they would say, hey, the collaboration is the technology, and here's this tool, uh, and so they 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 define that. If you've got a tool that is you know that is able to uh, or the, the the features built out inside of SharePoint to give you what you need you might look past the fact that your organization, that your management team doesn't really understand what's really making it successful or not. It's not that you had, well, we just, we went and bought this third party workflow tool, uh, you know, but it's the fact that no, we've actually, it's because we've got that and we've automated some of these key processes that we're doing more. It's not the technology as much as the business side of that. All right, let's jump to the next slide. Um, so how uh, you know, important is it to have well-defined metrics? And so you can see here the skew. Well, I mean, clearly they, uh, you know, we, we see, uh, you know, uh, the number five, you know, pretty important, uh, but on both sides. Um, I don't know, thoughts on this? Uh, uh, there, well, there seems to be a little more consensus here, for sure, um, and with with maybe um, with maybe management caring more about the metrics, which we would think would yeah. be the case. They want to want to be able to to, to measure, but uh, it doesn't jibe with the last question, right? Because metrics go with goals. You can't define your metrics in the absence of goals. You have to know what it is you're measuring. Uh, so how can it be important to measure without knowing what you're measuring? That's the question I have. I think it's interesting that on the management side, people went five. So that to me, I was right yeah. in the middle. It's like, well, they, the management cares. They care a little more than average. And that's how I think we get the 4.5. To me, that's almost like a cop-out answer. It, it, the, yeah. I almost would say like management almost doesn't really care. It's just people didn't quite know. So they went, ah, oh, they seem to care a little more than average. Um, but uh, yeah, what John saying is right. Like people, it's it, it's kind of disappointing they don't see that the metrics are not really that important. We saw the average drop from five point nine, I think, on the last question here to five, and that's a that's a pretty good drop. But people are like, well, yeah, metrics. But metrics is hard. I mean, how do you exactly measure? It? It's a difficult. Yeah, and I'm, this John's the guy. Like I'm, John, you should be jumping all over this. It, it's it's sort of hard to determine. So usage of Yammer, how do you determine success of Yammer? Uh, is it how many posts are submitted per month? Is it per day, per week? It's the how many people are looking at things, how many people are liking things. I've had clients that that's how they're doing it is they're determining success of their portal by how often someone's clicking like on an article. Right. And yeah. okay, it, yeah. it, it's not, it's a step, but it's, it's a difficult question and then to say, oh, well, you know, you've, you, you're going to be jumping your, your budget for these numbers, uh, if, if increasing your budget for us to track this kind of metrics, and a lot of my clients are just saying, that, no, you know, we barely have enough budget to get the thing done. Um, we'll just consider it a success if everyone thinks it looks good. You, you know, there, I had, we had a conversation with a guy who was, was uh, talking about uh, marketing and digital marketing and marketing automation and that side of things, and I said, well, let's... You know, and, and he was very much a, you know, thinking about, well, the data says and page views of this and, and the number of downloads. I'm like, okay, that that that's great. What are you actually trying to achieve? And here's the definition part. It's like, what are you actually trying to achieve? It's like, well, you know, more, more of this activity. It's like, really? You just, so if nobody ever bought anything, but you had five times the number of visits to your website, you'd be satisfied with that. Well, no, we want them to. Actually, I was like, all right, so then you, so what you just stated is wrong, that your goal is not to increase the numbers. The goal is more people buying your product. Right, right. Okay, so I would, like, how would your management team view the fact if you had fewer visitors but more sales? It's like, well, they they probably beat up on me because of the 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 metric is you know the first metric is off. I'm like, but does that matter if you you know? So think of that from a collaboration standpoint too. Does it matter you know how many likes you got uh, if the uh, the average time spent on a SharePoint site is a minute and a half versus if I suddenly have the average time and I'm just using this as examples websites to SharePoint sites don't translate the same way, but 
you know, if, if suddenly the average time being spent is 10 minutes instead of a minute and a half, but there's fewer people on there, you know, is that shows that people are more engaged, they're doing things on there. Um, and, and, you know, you can, you know, does it matter that there were fewer people on there if the people that are on there that need to be on there are getting more done? So that's just an example of, like, having an understanding of what are you trying to really do? What does success look like of this collaboration solution? It, it, get back, it gets back to your goals. Right. And then there's what can you measure, and then what does that measurement mean? So you, you, you throw it likes. It's a perfect one. Um, what does a like mean? Well, it, it is an indicator of the relative value of that piece of content. So if you, your, your content got 100 likes, it's an indication. Now, some people use the like button as an acknowledgement. I just saw that. Does that make that valuable? No, it just means it was read. Does it mean it was valuable? Maybe not. So there's a certain cultural element you're going to have to work into it it'll mean different things to different people so it's really it, this is all squishy stuff right it's not absolute when you're dealing with numbers that's 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 hard so uh, you, you're you're throwing out you know what how do you indicate uh the value of a yammer network well you know as, as someone who's got a product that does exactly that i could we spent an awful lot of time figuring out what that one number is because everybody wants to have one number to tell about the the success of their adoption, and you got to weigh all that 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 stuff in there. And it's not; it's more of an art than a science, really. I mean, the numbers are there; you got to be able to interpret them. Right, and I think that's, um, yeah. I think, I mean, look again. This is a, just on this one slide, this one topic. I mean, this is a whole hour of discussion just around this. I think the mm -hmm. where organizations have to be careful is in managing by spreadsheet and not looking at. <laughs> what the movement of the data is actually telling you about what's happening within your collaboration environment. Um, mm -hmm. And so the fact that you, you know, if you've got fairly stable numbers and you roll out this big initiative, this big push, and the numbers don't really change, that tells you something. It's, yeah. it's an extra, it's an excellent point actually because it and and you know I mean, actually like you're surprised John that I have a good point is that what <laughs> no exactly what I said. <laughs> <laughs> no but, but it, it's, it's, you know I was I was just going on about the value of a metric or, or how a metric is is, is put together yep. your metric could even be off but just watching it over time has value you know the absolute number doesn't maybe mean anything itself but watching how it moves over a period of months uh, or even years might be an indication of success in and of itself. Yeah. I, well, you know, I, I, I just, I take that piece of logic. I just remember having a conversation in the early nineties with college uh, roommate of mine who was like an options trader. And, uh, and he's like, I don't care about what the number is. It's about the movement. <laughs> it's like, that's yes. just what you watch is the movement. It says yep. you make money up or down, but it's the movement that you watch. But, uh, yeah, it's just uh, it's something that you need to think about. All right, so the last uh, point here I want to share from this this one, and then I'll encourage people to uh, take a look at the white paper when it's out next week. Again, I'm not making promises on, on Rachel's behalf, but I'm pretty sure next week. <laughs> um, but again, is this question of you know how important is it to have active and engaged end users for successful collaboration? And I think that's again, I'm I'm surprised that some people uh, the respondents yeah. answered six. Because yeah. you can have a beautiful SharePoint deployment, and if no one's using it, were you successful? No. <laughs> um, and then, you know, and, and and again, this is their perception on whether their management team views it as important. And I think this is probably the most telling data point that I saw in the report. I don't know, Eric, what do you think? Well, yeah, I completely agree. It's just it, it, the, the the questions, the answers don't really do baffle me sometimes. I can see why the first one, some people might have went six because actively engaged and active end users for successful collaboration. Well, it, it, it's it, it's important. It's really important, but the tools are there as long as their tools are there and they use them when appropriate, but they're not actively engaged. I can see someone putting in a six. I'm disappointed in that, but I kind of yeah. could see like, okay. well, I mean, it's important, but not as like a functional, right? If they're responding, if they get a notification, oh, I need to go do something on this workflow, yeah. they go do it and get right back out. 
effectively. Uh, but you look at the drop down to management, and yeah, okay, five, uh, five, six, five, five, six, seven is almost ninety percent. But still, um, no one said average. It's just hard to believe that like management doesn't care about end user activity. And I think that's almost like a cynical answer of people being somewhat upset, Ooh. shall we say, with their management. Like they don't care. They just told me to get some collaboration tools, and as long as they check off that it was delivered, they're okay with it. it, it it's disappointing, but I got reaction. I believe it. Yeah, and John, nothing really to add there. I mean, yeah, it's it's just it's, it would seem like the end users think the air is thin at the top. That's for sure. <laughs> well, you know, so one of the things that I really like about the, the these reports um, are that it is the just kind of the open questions and getting advice from the the community, and so still uh, uh, putting this together and finalizing this week and the final survey. But that's that's I think one of the the best the benefits of uh, you know this is is then just asking, hey, what would you say to others, you know, about how to go in and, and uh, uh, you know how to, how to make sure that your organization is is you know defining this. You know what 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 can other people do based on your experience to be more successful? And so you know these things like you know get everybody on the same page, agree on those goals. Um, you know again the, the word goals again of being clear on that. Um, experiment, pilot. You know try it out. You don't have to instantly be perfect. Um, but then to set expectations, which I think is also very critical with the leadership team, is to set expectations that it's not going to be perfect first time out. Um, be incremental in how you roll that out. Um, and then don't underestimate the amount of change that's needed to get people to collaborate effectively. I mean, these are these are from some of the respondents directly into this, this process. And so... You know the white paper is full of that, as well as um, you know great you know insights from members of the panel like Eric and John. So um, you know definitely want to take a look at that. And just uh, you know, just to, to wrap up here too, um, again you can find out more about these about all three of these out on bz.net on our website. Um, there's the links. There's the two existing uh, white papers. I know they're ugly URLs there, but. Um, uh, but you can go and download those today and get more information about that. Uh, the one on the left, the yellow one's about definition. The the middle one's, uh, the green one is about uh, uh, you know monitoring and measurement. And then this third one that's coming out. I don't know if we picked the color. I'm guessing blue, but uh, <laughs> it'll be up next week uh, on implementation and some of the best practices and guidance for. And and really the third one depends on having it clearly defined, having the right uh, expectations around metrics and the metrics in place, um, and then the implementation approach to kind of bring all these things together. Uh, so, I mean, any kind of final thoughts, Eric and John, before we wrap it? I think it should be blue. Uh, blue? <laughs> okay. Blue we and blue. We should have done, you know, we should have done a snap poll. You know what, just out of spite, I'm sure Rachel's going to make it like purple. I'm thinking or, or purple. bright orange, but I, yeah. I go for blue as well. Rachel, blue. That's, uh, you know, that's 100% of the people surveyed who are uh, participating in this <laughs> as panelists. 100%. How can you argue with that stat? Say blue. So. Well, thank you for, um, you know, Eric and John for, for joining me here today. Uh, and thank you all for, um, for again, for, for dialing in and participating. Once again, the recording here will be made available. We'll send out a link to everybody, so uh, feel free to share it with the team. If you do have any questions, um, would like you know, more information or see something that you vehemently disagree with on this, feel free to reach out to me. No, if you disagree, John, what's your email? No. Uh, um, uh, cbook at bz.net. <laughs> uh, but definitely uh, uh, reach out, uh, and we'd love to talk to you about this this topic, and I'm sure we'll all three of us be tweeting when the links are out there and sharing this out as well. But uh, Eric, John, thanks so much for uh, joining me here. Hi, hey, welcome. Thank you. And Thank you, man. It's been fun. Yeah. It's uh, Anyway, so I'm, I'm going to stop recording here, but then uh, stay on. I'll stick around. If there, if there are any questions, we've got a few people that – haven't dropped off, but if you have any questions, we'll stick around and answer a few. But uh, to the rest of you, have uh, a great rest of your day.